Hi there guys and welcome back to some more undrafted MVP. We're into the regular season now, so let's have a look and see where we are on the depth chart. As you can see, we are 68 overall, 15 places below Dak Prescott, meaning we are holding footballs for this year. It's a bit of a throwaway episode, but it at least shows us our progression. Let's get into some training. So training is a bit of a mixed bag. Hit as we threw there, so it's incomplete. Play action, all of these are, so uh, throwing deep is what we're trying to do. A complete one there, but third play, defensive end beats two players and sacks me. We hit another, well, we hit, we get another completion, and then we finish it off with a final completion giving us silver. Risky throw, but the receiver makes the catch. As I say, silver. I won't be showing any more training or any more medals, but uh, we get silver and gold all year. So let's get into our first game now. So we were down pretty big come the third quarter, and into the fourth quarter we then pull it back to then tie the game at 30 or with this extra point. With 42 seconds to go, it's looking like it's going to go to overtime. Our first real significant kick. Overtime was a bit bland, and we get a chance to win it for a, not far away at all, 36 yards, but we completely shank it, and we end up giving the ball back to Carolina on their 26. Consequently, they drive downfield and score the game-winning field goal, meaning we start 0-1. Mind you, it's not all bad news as we get to upgrade our player again, and we this time upgrade field general which still upgrades our overall. Everything at this stage is really got upgrade your player's overall rating. We go up to 69. And after training the following week, in week two, we can upgrade again. So we are again going to go with Field General just to bring up the overall. Um, as you can see, we went up two overall there. We actually bring up more of a balanced quarterback play there. So week two against the Giants starts out pretty well with 10-7. They, they send Dan Bailey, Bailey out, his career long is not even at the end of the second Seattle. half, sorry, this second quarter, but early on in the third, for a 63-yard field goal. Right, Dan Bailey is Steve never making that kick. So consequently, we give no them back a uh, great field position. They go on to tie the game. We're up 20 to 10, and you think, yes, we've got it in the bag. The Giants come back and beat us 24 to 20, and we start the season 0 and 2. That's a really bad loss to take, especially if you're Dak Prescott with Tony Romo on your tail. So week three is away at Seattle, and we all know what happened the last time that Tony Romo held the balls in Seattle. Here it is. So a decent first drive means that we get into field goal position and uh, yes, we make no mistake, or Romo makes no mistake spotting the ball that time and we take a 3 nothing lead. From there, it was really all downhill as you can see, we have 14-3 down, 21-3 down, 28 and then we pull a touchdown back at least but we do end up losing 30 Five so now they're going to send out the field goal unit to 10 as they, as they sent, me, sent Bailey out for another distance. long field goal. 59 yards this time and like the 63 yarder, it was far too long for it. A good five or seven yards the short there. Not, no yeah, as I say, that ended up making us lose 35 10 for that specific team. But the yes, we start on no three. But as the weeks go by, our rating continues to go up, and this time we go with strong arm QB, sorry, no, field general, and we are up another rating for 71 overall. Game four, and uh, yeah, looks like a good start. We uh, get into field goal range, but we try a fake and tackled for a 90 yard loss. And possibly we do take a 14 0 lead, which looks good on paper, especially going into the fourth quarter. 16, 7, 24 to 14, 24 to 21. We then have field goal with 344 left. It's a fairly long one, 51 yards, make it 27 to 21. 
happen. You would think with three and a half minutes to go, we'd be able to at least stop them. No. We lose 28 to 27 and we start the season 0 and 4. Jason Garrett doesn't look happy. It's not looking good for Dak Prescott again. But uh, yeah. Into game five now, and this is the Houston Texans in Houston. And you know, 10 3 down in the second quarter, 10 all as we go to half. 13 10, we take the lead finally in a game. And, and then continue to push the Texans going forward. We then take the lead at 34 24. We're sent out for another fairly long field goal, which they need to. Converts 37 24, and that's how it finishes. So we finally get our first game, first win of the season with five games gone. And we are continuing to grow. We have another upgrade point available, and this time we're going for field general again just to upgrade our overall a bit more in a broader, broader range of attributes, but we got to a 72 overall. So game six against the Jags, you'd think despite the bad, the, the really good defense, we'd be able to put some, some points up given that the offense is not particularly good. We do take the lead 9-7, uh, but then we come the extra point. falling behind 17-9. They block our extra point on the field goal, which means that we now trail 17-15. And although we put pressure on Jacksonville to score a game, after we put it back to 22 to 24, that's a real score again. We get the build on to at least match their pace at 27 to 25, or we are finally denied a win 30 to 25. One and five starts. Somebody's losing their job. Into game seven against the Redskins, and well. We need a win, really, and it's not a good start as we go down to 7-0. We tie it back up, Washington take the lead again, it's a back and forth game. We pull it back to 14-10, but they score a 20, sorry, a third touchdown, then kick an extra uh, field goal as well. We're now down 24-21 before finally taking the lead at 28-24, which is how it finishes. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a decent game. We then have two skill points that we can upgrade ourselves with, so this time we go strong arm, we're up to 73 overall, we really are gaining on DAC at this point. And we then go field general for another one, which takes up to 74. So that's another six points we've had in seven weeks that we've gone up. So the standings after eight weeks show as this, we are bottom of our division at 2-5. and five. The Giants are only just ahead of us at 2-5-1. And the Redskins are 2 4 and 1, which means they've got a lower uh, loss percentage. Um, but the Eagles, so far, running away with it at 5 and 3. Not looking good for us as we continue our fight for the playoffs. Hey, who knows, we can still come back. So we're into our eighth game in week 9, and we're actually in the lead for just a short time. And you know, our defense seems very leaky, our offense seems very shaky, but we are now 10 points ahead into the fourth quarter. We're now 14 points, 17 points, it's all going well. We're finally scoring points and we finish the game winning 40 to 27. Still bad showing on defense, it's still more or less four touchdowns that we conceded there. But 40 points on offense has been our best output to this point. We have another upgrade that we can make and so Again, it's always between strong arm and field general, and this time it is tough. But we go for field general again, and as you can see our overall goes up to 75. Into the next one, and we are playing against Philadelphia, the division leaders, current Super Bowl champions, and despite being 7-0 down and kicking two field goals early on, we soon put go into another gear as going into the fourth quarter with 14 to 7 up extra and with this extra available. point we've hit a 50 burger against the Super Bowl champions with extra two minutes to, remain, to go in the game. The they do get another touchdown but uh, a 
50 to 14 win against the current Super Bowl champions. Charles, it's one thing to win, Despite it's the incredibly to win, frustrating start that we've had, surely must kick off the season into gear, right? I mean, what Let's hope Zeke Elliott had a big game and Jeff Prescott actually looks good. On to the next game, and it's against Atlanta. We are 7 3 down immediately, 7 6, and then I think we actually try to put up. Well, we can't put it back. With 10 9 down in the third quarter, 13 9, it's just our defense just can't do anything. And Dak Prescott has good games and bad games, obviously. But we lose that one 20 to 9. Another upgrade is available, and it's, it's always a toss up between these two. We go field general again, and there we go 76 overall now. We are as a strong arm QB. Washington again, obviously we've beaten the last time we played them, and this time it's looking a bit more of a cagey affair, 7 all, and again we go down late on in the second, but we're now up 14-10, 14 to 13 as we hit the fourth quarter, and a 21 all midway through the fourth quarter, we do then score another touchdown, and this field goal really iced the game as it put us up 10 points with just over two minutes to go. I mean, you'd think we'd hold on, and at last, our defense does something which holds out the defense for the last two minutes. We're 31 to 21. With more upgrades available, we take our overall rating to 77, picking up the strong arm upgrade there. We are really gaining on that. Given that he started the season at 83, we started at 68. We were really keep pushing him, giving him a run for his money. New Orleans now, and you know, 24 nothing down at half time. Nothing's really going to happen for us, is it? Apparently, we went for two and missed it, but we are now 34 13 down. 41 13 is the final score. Unbelievable. More upgrades despite we, despite our constant losses each uh, each week. We go for strong arm again. We're up to 78 overall. As I say, always gain on that every week. Philadelphia again. You know we had a very good game against them last time. But they've scored 10 points already, and despite being 17, 16 down at the half, we then take the lead and continue from there as we did in our last game against them 35 to 24 up and we finished the game winning 42 to 24 so another Charles, excellent win, win against win. a good Eagles side We've done the double over which means any tiebreakers between the two sides week 14 in Indianapolis of course Dallas were held out uh, in real life but on Madden it's always different. We're up 21 to 3 in the second quarter, 21 to 6, 28 to 6, it's all going well, 31 to 6 before finally 31 9 Still and an important piece of business to take care of we're clearly better than that with Dallas Cowboys in real life. Beaten in Indianapolis, which they couldn't do. And to say it finishes that way. But Charles, it's great to win at home. Our next player upgrade will take us up to a 79 overall. So we're just getting the overall up so we can take the strong arm QB. As I say, we just want to catch that, get ourselves a start for the Dallas Cowboys. 91 throw power, 87 deep accuracy there. On to Tampa Bay, and you know, we're down early, but we tie it back up. And that's the thing. The team started to play well in the back half of the season. You know, we took the lead at 13 to 10 there, and we never so really looked back. Down, this get this score here, or this field goal here, really killed the game for us in, in a way. Put us up by nine points. We just kept on top of what they were scoring down. in terms of like, matching it. As you see there, 26 to 17, and then 24 to 26. And that's how it finished. We go on to win a game. New York in the final game of the season. Down seven early. We go out for a field goal. 
The Cowboys will turn it over that to Dan Bailey for the field goal. Is even worse from than the, right hash and a bit of a tight angle. the kick against Carolina when we shanked it. Hits in the post. It's Cody Parkey all over again. It stays 7 0. We do kick a field goal, however. That is literally all of our luck for the entire game. 21 3 down going into the fourth quarter. 28 3 down, even. Maybe you'd give Tony Romo a chance, but no. We finished the game losing 35 to 3 against the New York Giants. So the yearly awards now. The MVP, in fact, was our own Ezekiel Elliott as he ran for around 2,000 yards and had 700 receiving yards as well. Coach of the year, Sean McVay, as expected. Dak Prescott actually had quite a good season. 4,365 yards there. 33 touchdowns, just 10 picks. But, uh, it just seemed to be garbage time stuff a lot of the time. You know, certainly early on in the season. Going on to Zeke, as you see there, 424 carries, 1,944 uh, rushing yards, 12 touchdowns, and just one fumble on so many carries, which is no wonder he won the MVP. And finally, Dan Bailey, 35 from 40 field goals and 39 extra points from 40. As you saw, our only extra point was actually blocked. But that is it for this episode of Undrafted to MVP. In the next episode, we will be on to season two and hopefully we'll be able to get our first start for the Dallas Cowboys. But that is it for this episode. As always, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any feedback for me, then please leave it in a comment below. And if you want to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing, including this Undrafted to MVP series, then please subscribe and I will see you next time.